Hey guys, Tomboy61, and today we are in the Nagato, and uh, we're in it for a couple reasons. One, we did just add this ship to our fleet. Currently working my way through the end of the Conqueror campaign, and I'm at the point where I need to use King George and, and Nagato every day to get my free 100k boosts. You know what you know what that life is like in the bureaus. So uh, finally unlocked her to go ahead and start getting those boosts. Then we uh, recently got a special package um, from the people over at Games Workshop. If you don't know who that is, you probably know their IP. It's the Warhammer people. If you want to see that video, it should be going up around the same time. But by doing so, we uh, went ahead and also equipped our Warhammer commander for the Nagato, and that's Arthas the Cold. He's a chaos-based uh, uh, commander. His highlights being that when you use the fighter plane, you can get a 20-something percent boost to your damage, and then you can also use another one of his skills to get an additional 11% boost to all your shells, and it's 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 wonderful. Anyways, first shot out right there on the Edinburgh and uh, Citadel, and sunk. And that's how we like to start off a game. 25k, Dev Strike, and First Blood. Now... We usually do comment of the day, and today's comment of the day goes out to Corey T. He says, looking to get my first GXP ship, this video makes me want the Odin. And I totally understand. Uh, Odin can be, she is one that giveth, and she is one that taketh away. Uh, sometimes you get beautiful games in her, and other times, uh, if your opponents know what they're doing, it's going to be a real rough one, especially if you play it fairly aggressively. And uh, thankfully, that game was definitely a good one. Anyways, Fletcher's sitting there. I think he's being radared by our friendly cruiser. He has a slither of health left, and we are going to hopefully kind of steal this kill. Shot out, and uh, away we go. And of course, nope, not at all. Not at all. That is one of the things I am noticing with the Nagato is uh, her lack of accuracy sometimes. I... Soon, uh, I plan on bringing out Takagi for her. Of course, T Takagi, you're going to get that extra range and also the extra accuracy within Dispersion, and hopefully that will make the ship a little more fun. Also, kind of one of the unique things about Nagato that I am enjoying is she does have access to the Concealment mod, so I'm looking forward to uh, a somewhat Concealment build in the Nagato, and of course, when we do that, I'll be bringing it you guys a video on it anyways we are uh, pushing into C uh, because we have Arthas and he's kind of a brawler build we're gonna attempt to kind of brawl in the ship there is an enemy Nagato there and he is in fairly broadside so we are going to completely take advantage of that our airplane just coming down but we do get a decent 7k salvo off on him and our next salvo ends up just completely missing unfortunately once again that the rng taketh and she giveth away taketh and giveth giveth and taketh uh either way not not the best salvo there but nagato still sitting just flat broadside so we're gonna go ahead fire our next salvo at nagato go ahead and get the capture which is what we always want get that free xp for um doing that and nagato we get another decent salvo. Enemy ship, or a friendly ship, gets a fire started on him. And that's going to start burning him down in damage. We get 7k and we are up to 42,000. And we're going to try to kind of go into the smoke to disappear. But we did just fire our weapon, so we may not disappear. Helena, flat broadside to us. Um, and when there's a flat broadside ship, it is time to go ahead and fire. Shots are out. And uh, one shot. Hits the Citadel, 13,000 damage, and hopefully we can go ahead and finish her off. Just sad that we didn't get the full kill right there. But, hey, that last bit took the damage, and we're good. Helena, though, letting us know, taking a good chunk of damage out of us right uh, right as it goes down. Uh, once again, showing just how powerful those USN uh, light cruisers are. They, they do a fairly impressive job at doing damage. So uh, good for them. And now we're just kind of hunting, trying to see who we can get a target on. Miyoko is just behind that uh, just behind that island. 
Nagato is protected, and we know that there's an Atlanta behind the island that's in front of us. So it is going to be just a manner of who we want to go at. Atlanta reversing out at five kilometers. And if you're reversing and you're horizontal, we have a fairly good idea at what you're going to be doing. And that is, of course, launching torpedoes at us. So we go ahead and uh, finish the Atlanta off uh, and go ahead and start to dodge his torpedoes. And that's just what we like to do now. This is where we make probably the biggest mistake of the match. We go, oh, we're in clear water. Miyoko is sailing away. Nothing can possibly go wrong. We're on fire. Let's go ahead and use our damage con. Because uh, we, we want to just go ahead and stop taking that damage. And literally as we use it, what comes out? But I believe the Miyoko went ahead and fired torps. If not, one of the, the destroyers. And uh, this is going to hurt. One torpedo, two torpedoes, three torpedoes. Damage on them, luckily it hit the torpedo belt. So the uh, the alpha damage on them, not bad. But we have freshly used our repair party. We have knocked engines. We are flooding and we are on fire. Three things you do not want to happen to you in the battleship. By the way, enemy Nagato goes down and we are hemorrhaging. Uh, we are hemorrhaging. Uh, uh, hit points at this point and uh, the only thing that we can do is hope that will to rebuild keeps us alive so we're going to go ahead and reach out to our neighbors and say hey help us get back stay with us we need your support hopefully they can see that they are keeping us alive we're going to pop our heel as well try to get through the worst of it and last 14 more seconds so that we can uh, go ahead and live and as we do that, Moss is back with a vengeance. He is launching torps, and those are going to hit us if we can't get this uh, engine repaired. Thankfully, we get the engine repair. Th throw it in full forward. Throw it in full speed ahead and uh, start pulling away. And thankfully, none of those torpedoes hit our team, and we are able to make the dodge. Will to rebuild still taking effect. Unfortunately, we have clustered up like a, uh, like a black hole. Like, uh, you know, just, just a, uh, just like a singularity has happened. I feel like kind of Ratchet and Clank or, uh, I don't know about you guys personally, me, I've been playing through, uh, the Ratchet games and going and looking at like deep dives on all the Ratchet and Clank games in anticipation for the new Ratchet game. And they always have a singularity gun. And I feel like that singularity gun has, uh, had its effect in this game recently as uh, with the introduction of carriers, some teams just like clustering up now. And uh, it it doesn't really seem to uh, be very fruitful for them. Uh, just because when, once you cluster down like that, you're seeding the broadside. You're seeding the flanks to your enemy. And they are able to have access to all your broadsides and are able to fairly easily get shots on you that you usually wouldn't. Akatsuki goes down there. Um, so unless you have the numeric advantage, it does not make sense to, uh, cluster up. And I challenge you guys who are watching this to, uh, realize when that happens and try to do something about it. Uh, it, it is sometimes hard because like, I know for me, I've had times where like, I'm the, the head of the, the lemming train or the black hole where people are just like following me around. I'm like, okay, well. I can, I can only do so much, especially when I'm in a battleship that's very slow. Anyway, shout out on the Colorado. We go ahead and pop our, our, our plane, and we do some pretty decent damage on that salvo. Uh, that is one of the nice things with Arthas the Cold of being Chaos. It does, I don't know if you guys have played Warcraft, but the Chaos faction does tend to rely on, well, Chaos and RNG. Their armies um, and their and their hit stuff is very based on random rolls. Like landing on specific numbers gives you like double or triple damage. And uh, I like that they kind of brought that forward within this game by giving us a 33% boost to damage when we fought, fly a plane. But of course, we have to hit them, and we all know how dispersion and RNG likes to mess with people in this game. Anyways. We uh, kind of 
bully the Surrey there, but we d make him dodge out of the way of shells. So really, we were being the bodyguard. We were protecting him from the incoming shells. We were doing a good thing there. We weren't being a bullying teammate, but uh, clearly he wants to get by and we are absolutely going to let him. Colorado is going to go ahead and keep popping in and out. Of course, he is behind the set of cover. So uh, he is going to to kind of appear and disappear and appear and disappear. And we will take our shots when we can. But more importantly, we're going to start uh, heading the opposite direction of him. You know, trying to break the mold of of the black hole. Of the black hole. Keep, uh, expand the angles that we have shots on him. And more importantly, if he's sailing one way, we tend to want to sail the other way. That way we, uh, we kind of, we ensure that we keep access to his broadside, especially because he's kind of turning in and moving this way. If we go on a collision course of him, we're going to tighten that angle usually, and it will be a lot harder for us to go ahead and get those more consistent salvos. Speaking of which, a beautiful salvo right there. Another good one. Thanks to the plane. We are now up to 93,000 and we have our high caliber. Uh, Moss is looking in the back right there. Ventured into sea, but thankfully our cruisers have gone ahead and scared him off. And at this point, I do kind of also feel like this was another mistake on my part, but I don't feel too bad just because uh, Colorado is definitely a threat to our fleet. Mind you, we uh, definitely, our three ships should be able to take down the Colorado uh, but we are going to go ahead and start turning out. And as we turn out, also start angling our way towards a, it's their last point. If we can go ahead and make our way there before the three minutes is up, that's only going to benefit us. Of course, uh, this being a tech tree ship beyond just getting, uh, more money for doing a good job in the game. We are also going to get more experience and, uh, at this point, that is what I'm after, grinding through those tech tree ships. So the name of the game is gaining experience and how you do that, as I'm sure we've talked about it multiple times on this channel, it's going to be playing the objective. So in domination, that is capturing the bases. You get a huge number of points for capturing the bases and of course, doing damage to other ships. Now at this point, we've done damage to all of the ships that we really can. We'll keep an eye out for the Moss, but uh, he's very far away. And last time he was spotted, he was very much outside of our range. So what are our options to, to now uh, improve our score? Well, it's going to be to go ahead and cap A, and that's exactly what we are going to do. Now, will we be able to make it there in time? It's going to be a drag race. Sadly, we have not gotten our engine upgrade yet for the Nagato. Uh, so we are going to max out at just over 20 knots, which um, is not that impressive. It is a battleship. It is going to be slow. And uh, sadly, we uh, we we aren't really going to get there in time. You have to remember, of course, it takes one full minute to capture any uh, objective area when it is in domination. And if you are on your own, it's going to take the full minute. Of course, if you have other people with you, it will take a little bit less time but we need to basically get there before the one minute mark as it very clearly seems that that enemy Moss is uh, not going to be engaging the rest of our ships and he's going to let the time uh, slip away in hopes of, I don't know, stretching the game out longer. But as we hit the 59 second mark, he actually goes into C, which good on him. He wants to go down fighting uh, and we will slip into A. Of course, slipping into A is also going to, uh, if if we weren't ahead, what it would do is also stop us from accruing points from the A capture point. He's doing that right now. The enemy destroyer is doing that right now in C. He's preventing us from accruing capture points from two locations. We're only gaining at one, which does, of course, slow our, does it does essentially neutralize the game. It neutralizes the uh, delta of points because if both teams have one point or if both teams only have one then they accrue the points at the same rate and it does give him a sort of a chance at it but really uh, I think he knew he was going to go down fighting and guys this is going to be game as we wrap we end up getting uh we end up pulling out the dreadnought and uh, I believe there's one other medal we get the one for not for uh, surviving a bunch of flooding because uh, 
guess what? We survived a bunch of flooding. But guys, that's Game of Nagato. We'll have a future one with a self-build. Hope you guys enjoy the game. See ya.